Meanwhile, Tenenbaum observed Su Chong's experimenting on Jack. Su Chong was quite deep in the conditioning, with Tenenbaum only assisting, not completely understanding the method, and Su Chong refused to answer her questions. Fourteen found the results of Jack promising. Fourteen used the smuggling ring to smuggle Jack out to the surface, where he quickly grew into an adult with a false history. He quickly adopted the name Jack Wynand. Fourteen then asked for Su Chong to make an antidote just in case, but Su Chong was allowed to turn one, not even Tenenbaum. Fontaine to become some kind of boogeyman in rapture. That myth gives him power. But peel back flim flam and a humbug, he's just another con man. And like all con men, he worries he'll end up on the wrong side of grief. That's why he commissioned the lot 192. The antidote to the mental control plasmid. Fontaine said I better not tell anybody about the antidote. Not even Tenenbaum. And Su Chong is inclined to listen. Sullivan, Cavendish, and some of the constables captured all 14's men, a guy named Timmy H. They tortured him until he gave up information that would help him on a future raid. Now the eggs are in the scramble. We picked up Timmy H right after midnight. Either Ryan will be taking down Fontaine, or Fontaine will be taking down Ryan. We'll be uh, interviewing poor Timmy near Fontaine Fisheries. If you're up for. Entertainment. The code's 5380. Mr. Ryan asked me personally to make this clear to you. You give us Fontaine and this whole filthy ring of his, and you'll be knocking back pints up at the Fighting McDonough's. But if you prefer to play the mule, we'll treat you like a mule. Give him a taste, Patrick. <laughs> What's that? Change of heart, Timmy? Timmy! Ready to talk now? Go on, Sullivan. Go on and do your duty. Whatever Ryan thinks he can do to me, Fontaine can do double! Ryan's security was closing in on 14, and Su Chong was aware something bad might go down soon, so he was considering other options. He held on to the research for Jack's conditioning. He made it so if one uttered a certain phrase, known as the W-Y-K phrase, Jack would do whatever order he was given at that moment. This conditioning was called the Ace in the Hall by Fontaine, who was amazing his forces. Frank Fontaine called me in the other day. Me, Ray Larden. Says trouble's coming and he's passing out special plasmids to all his best guys. I mean, it's an honor, but man... I started getting these shingles all over. Skin's discolored. Like when a guy's about to lose a limb, you know? And I can't seem to pile on enough clothes. I hate to ask, but... Is this happening to everybody? Forte was extremely angry that Su Chong wasn't handing the ace in the hole over. Without that phrase, all of his work on Jack was pointless. Su Chong. I'm gonna make this clear as can be, so we don't have any miscommunications. Where the hell is the ace in the hole? You think you can stiff Frank Fontaine? I paid good money for state-of-the-art weaponry. I ain't losing this war just because you found yourself a higher bidder. I can promise you. I ain't never been one to lose with dignity. Meanwhile, many citizens of Rapture had their own problems escalated due to the growing amount of violence and fooding going on in the city. Some of us have been talking about changes in the labor laws down here. But you gotta be careful. In Rapture, talking can disappear a fella. Not just his body either, but his stuff too. And all records of him. People stop saying his name for fear. But not me. I'll go down to Ryan HQ and weld my name across the building in 40 foot letters! Oh, Brad really burns me up. Refusing to allow splicing near the kids. 
What about the neighbors? I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses here. I'm trying to stop them from killing us. I mean, I love Fred, I do. But if he won't wear the pants around here, I'll just have to pull them up over my pantyhose. Poor young Burke died an awful death at the fisheries today. Mangled. Floor was slick with guts. Clumsy arse must have slipped. Suppose it was me heard his last words. Something to do with a stash of Adam he's got hid in his cabin. Shame to see him go. Had such great faith in his fellow man. The theaters, they have closed. And so I am alone. This life without the stage. It has always been for me drudgery. My isolation is my own doing, this I know. But I am made this way, a creature of detachment. But possibly, I can remake myself. With Adam, maybe I can live like the others. In ignorance, yes, but no longer alone. I've never known a problem can't be solved with the right kind of party. Met a man named Frankie Fontaine at my shindig last night. Old Frankie's gonna help me get my contraband kitties down here. Mm -mm. <laughs> and he brought something new to the party as well. Something positively scandalous. Some kind of wonder drug called Adam. Six months locked up in this dirty little clink they got down here. And I've been noticing some awful strange goings on. Like today. Woke up, and Knuckles wasn't in the cell. Later on, the science bums came through, carrying one of them metal suits. Next thing, I heard screaming. Now, I've done a lot of bad things to people, but I ain't never made no one scream like that. 14 meanwhile was a massacre's forces. He made gun on his deal with Steinman. He had a double surgically made to look like him while the real Fortane changed his face and name to that of the fictitious character he created, named Atlas. Every time Ryan turns up the heat, I know I'm a little bit closer to beating him at his own game. But now the game's changing. Ryan's boys are coming in heavy, looking to knock down my door and take what's mine. Like this is the first time I had to dodge a bullet. They're coming to my house expecting a show, but they're gonna get a disappearing act. Say goodbye to Fontaine, and hello to Atlas. On September 12, 1958, Bill, Sullivan, Redgrave, Cavendish and a small army of men amassed to take down 14 fisheries, 14 futuristics and 14's department store simultaneously. When the fight had started, it became evident that their ambush had been leaked and there was an army splices there to combat them. Many of Ryan's men died, but the rest made it out alive thanks to Ryan's new line of weapons. Even though Ryan's men had to retreat, Cavendish managed to kill the man who called himself 14 with a shotgun. Tenebrum managed to escape the carnage. Fontaine is dead. Hmm. Bad for Fontaine. Good for Su Chong. Play hard to get for a bit. Then Mr. Ryan get hungry for me. Tenenbaum gone, Fontaine gone. Su Chong only one who know all about little sisters. Like I said, this is very good for Su Chong. Fontaine knew our blokes were coming. We were done over. Then splices come screaming out the woodwork. Burp in fire, spit in ice, demons out of the Bible they were. I've never seen nothing like it. It wasn't a business he was building. It was an army. The good people of Rapture didn't sign up to see us government type shutting down shops, killing their owners. Even with a ponce like Fontaine. But he brung it upon himself. Instead of copping it on the chin, bugger gets it into his head that he's gonna go down guns blazing. Who does he think he is? John Bloody Wayne? We can get on top of this. We can. Here's what we do. We find Fontaine's will and make what was his go to where it was intended. And not into the pockets of us that put him into the ground. Ryan made no hesitation acquiring 14 Futuristics. Against Bill's advice, Ryan began rebranding the products under Ryan Plasmids. 
Although the name 14 Futuristics itself never died out, be it by word of mouth or on the signs in Ratchet, it was too famous. This facility belongs to the city now, to Ryan Industries, at least until the rioting subsides. While it is unfortunate that such measures had to be taken, I must admit, it is gratifying to see this building condemned. Fontaine is gone, Lamb is gone, or close enough. I am alone at last, alone with my city. Ryan nationalized Fontaine Futuristics. He owns it now, lock, stock and barrel. For the good of the city, he says. He'll break it up in due time, he says. I've resigned from the council and lodged me letter of protest, but that's just pissing in the wind. It'll be war, I say, unless somebody stops Ryan and right fast. After the dust settled, Silver took Ryan to the orphanages to see whether rumours about the Little Sisters were true. All of them were true. They captured Su Chong and Tenebrum and they locked them up in the same cell. Ryan spoke with them. Su Chong said he had an idea of enough way to gather Adam from existing spices that he was working on. Tenebrum just felt self-pity. Ryan led them, along with Alexander, work with him on the condition that they swear loyalty to him, which they did. Ryan also began work on designing vending machines for plasmids to increase his own wealth, now that he owned 40 Futuristics. What a terrible thing! Japanese kill every man in my city, except for Su Chong. Su Chong have opium. Very good opium. This war, terrible thing too, but not for Su Chong. Everyone's scared now. Everyone need Adam. More than little sisters can make. Good news is war makes lots of corpses. Su Chong knows a way to recycle Adam from corpses, but can't send the little sister out the street unprotected. Su Chong must think on this. I'll admit Fontaine showed some foresight when he built up the plasmid business, but the man really never understood sales. Hiding those little girls beneath a bushel. I've just seen the preliminary design work on the new plasmid machines, and they're exactly what I wanted. Mark my words, presented properly, those little sisters are marketing gold. Meanwhile, Diane won a ton of cash at the casino, but she didn't care because she couldn't spend it on anything she wanted. A low class woman, Margie, approached Diane and asked for some of the money. After Lam was arrested, she felt she needed to follow someone new, and so Margie was now a supporter of Atlas. Diane gave her some money, and Margie gave her a pamphlet that spoke of how good Atlas was. Bill and Wallace saw Atlas giving one of his speeches and he was becoming quite popular. They couldn't stay long as some splices that were gone at Atlas tried to attack them. Also, Ryan gave a short speech acknowledging Charles and his development of the plasma business he acquired from 14. There has been tremendous pressure to regulate this plasmid business. There have been side effects, blindness, insanity, death. But what use is our ideology if it is not tested? The market does not respond like an infant, shrieking at the first sign of displeasure. The market is patient, and we must be too. Are you in the know? There has been a lot of idle talk from gadflies and naysayers following the nationalization of Fontaine Futuristics. I believe in free men and free markets, but I also believe in my city. And Frank Fontaine's purpose was nothing less than the destruction of Rapture. It was he who gave comfort to the laggards and layabouts. It was he who coddled the traps and vagabonds. Fontaine was poisoning the people of Rapture. But his venom wasn't made of arsenic or strychnine, no. It was concocted from something far deadlier. It was brewed from altruism. Now you know. Are you in the know? 
You've doubtlessly sampled products from Fontaine Futuristics. But do you know why Ryan Industries saved it? Frank Fontaine, business leader and benefactor of mankind? Or was he the best friend the parasite ever had? Were you aware his businesses were a front for a smuggling ring? And were you also fooled by his supposed charity work? At his free clinic, patients became test subjects, and his orphanages were places that children disappeared into and never came out. Once they learned the truth, Rapture's Central Council called for the arrest of Fontaine Futuristic's owner. But, a coward to the end, Fontaine found a hail of bullets preferable to facing justice. The Council asked that Ryan Industries assume the burden of stewardship of Fontaine's ill-gotten assets. And Andrew Ryan accepted that burden for the people of Rapture. Now all citizens can enjoy these products, free of criminal taint. Now you know. Atlas, however, had his own response to Ryan's messages. The time has come, brothers and sisters. Did you want to keep climbing Andrew Ryan's ladder? Just to watch him knock it down as you're reaching the top? The cards are stacked. What's a bunch of fine words? If there ain't deeds to back them up. Rapture was supposed to be different. But the only thing that separates it from the slums of New York or Glasgow are about a million gallons of salt water. Ryan sent a clear message when he had Frank Fontaine put down. It's time all you learned your place. I tell you what, Ryan. Message received. Loud and clear. And here's what the people of Rapture have to say to you. If you won't give us what we want, we're more than happy to come and take it. Ryan also told Paul to get rid of the rest of Ram's forest as best as he can, while Ram is out of the picture, holographing Persephone. Christ. Rapture. City's a house of cards and a kiddie pool. Lamb's out of the picture now, and Ryan wants me to finish off the family. Shouldn't be hard. The shrink was the linchpin. Now they're just... lost. But Ryan isn't exactly the rock of Gibraltar these days. This Atlas character's got him way back on his heels. What is gonna be left of this town when the fur stops flying? Ryan gave some Adam to Langford for Arcadia to keep the oxygen flowing throughout Rapture. Langford began to try and use Adam to make trees more efficient. Who says you can't teach an old hound new tricks? This batty plant woman spends four years coming up with ways to defoliate trees in the Pacific to scare out the Japs, and now here I am, down at the bottom of the Atlantic, trying to figure out how to do the same thing in reverse. Adam, Adam, Adam. It's bathtub gin times the atom bomb times Eve with a serpent. Let's go see what it can do. Ryan, with Kowalski, met Su Chong and Tenenbaum in a lab for an emergency meeting. The scientists were down to the last few sea slugs and all Adam was almost gone. The scientists however had a solution, they, they proposed harvesting Adam from corpses that had been accumulated a lot of it. Lewis has had the ability to seek out corpses that were full of it, but they would need to be protected by the cyber guardians called protectors, so they furthered development on them. The girls liked to call the protectors big daddies, and some people began to use the term. Su Chong used the experimented people that Ryan stockpiled from Persephone before Lam took it over. They had plenty of subjects for their purposes. While he worked, Ryan sent extra munitions to Su Chong for protection. Ryan sent over extra munitions. He must have suspected trouble. I will lock them up near the protector labs and set the code to 1921. I don't expect we'll ever be needing them though. Once Big Daddy is ready, nobody cross the Big Daddy. Big Daddy make a terrible stink. Very smelly. Maybe something can be done, but the little sisters seem to like order. Now we have to find the recruits. You become Big Daddy, it's a one-way street. 
But Ryan says don't worry. Recruits will be no problem. That Ryan. He's a good guy. Alexander gave a fighter chamber to Suchark to install to make operational. Even though Suchark thought it was preposterous, Ryan ordered him to go through with it. Initial deployment, Vita Chamber. Client Ryan Industries, a stage one, age complete. Sinclair and Alexander tried to explain the science to me, but Suchan does not believe them. They keep saying plasmid reconstruction this and quantum entanglement that, and then prove dead people come back to life. Bullshit! Of course, Ryan will only allow it to be tuned to his genetic frequencies for the testing. Sutrak's development of Big Daddy's was heavily underway, although he was really frustrated by the shortcomings that Ryan gave him, but he still proceeded with his research. God damn it! The Big Daddy boots need to be shipped here, not a damn library. What kind of idiot is Ryan hiring in our days? This kind of bullshit never happened on the Fontaine. Fontaine, scary son of a bitch. But Ryan, cheap son of a bitch. You can no reuse protector suit. Take a man, graft the skin and organs straight into suit. Otherwise, your suit will not work. Ryan say Big Daddy too expensive. Ryan can go saga egg. Sutra created two models of the Big Daddy, the Bouncer and the Rosie. However, Sutra couldn't bond the Big Daddy and the little sister together to make them symbiotic. Sutra became engrossed in his work, so much that he lost contact with the other scientists of Rapture. His sudden silence was interpreted by some people as just being another death in the chaos that had become consuming Rapture. Sutra continued developing Big Daddies using captured prisoners in his clinic. Are you in the know? The Big Daddy may look imposing, but he's a gentle giant. Do you know all he does for Rapture? These metal gents are the hands that maintain Rapture, digging the foundation out of the seabed and guiding structural supports into place. Where do these metal mysteries come from? Sorry, chum, that's a Ryan Industries trade secret. Now you know. In the old 14 Futuristics building, Gil Alexander picked up where Su Chong left off, believing him to be dead. Both Su Chong and Alexander began to work simultaneously on bonding Big Daddy's little sisters so that they would care for each other in a symbiotic relationship. The Big Daddy needed to protect the little sister from harm, while the little sister needed to gather the atom that allowed the Big Daddy to operate. Dr. Su Chong's death was a nasty blow to the protector program, but I'm gradually settling into his role, picking up the slack that his carelessness left behind. We are gaining steam again, but I'm not satisfied. Yes, the Big Daddy defends the girl, but he is programmed only for the fight. Like a sheepdog who wanders off unless a wolf is tearing at his flock. When no aggressor is present, he regards his little sister as he might a common houseplant. We need something more, something stronger, an unbreakable physiological bond. All of the Big Daddies at this point could often be found near Little Sisters, but he had no real affection to them. Alexander began developing his own line of Big Daddies, building upon the Bouncer and Rosie designs. These were called the Alpha series of Big Daddies, which were numbered in Greek. However, an effective bond had yet to be discovered. We lost another of the Alpha series protectors today in testing. Somewhere outside the city limits, he simply vanished. For these men, Rapture has no walls. We must find a method of conditioning them against abandonment of the Little Sisters. Something physical, possibly even lethal. The lab aides are starting to call them Big Daddies. Perhaps there's some genius to that. Bonded pairs, connected by a love that kills. Eventually, Alexander developed a chemical that psychologically forced the paired Big Daddy and Little Sister to be within each other's facility. This was first tested upon the fourth Alpha Series Big Daddy, Subject Delta, who was created from the body of Johnny Topside, and a little sister, Eleanor Lamb, whose name wasn't known to Alexander. The two became genuinely close and affectionate, leading to a successful bond. The pair bond is a success. 
If somehow an Alpha series wanders too far from his little sister, our physical failsafe kicks in, a chemical trigger that induces coma. It is a symbiotic relationship enforced by the girl's pheromone signature. The first successful candidate was Delta, I believe. It is unfortunate that poor Dr. Su Chong will not be here to raise a glass. Elizabeth arrived in Vatra for a tear in Mars London Man's Silver Finn restaurant, which was located in 14's apartment store. Upon her arrival, she began to go by the name Elizabeth Comstock and she decided to wear something more suitable to the culture. So, she stole Caroline's dress, swapping it with her mother's dress that she'd been wearing. How many times have I asked Antonio for lockers with actual locks on them? I come back from lunch and the ensemble I just bought is gone. Stolen! But here's what takes the cake. The thief left an outfit in exchange. At first I was going to toss that thing, but then... I kind of fell in love with it. <laughs> it's an old timey number with a corset, no less. It ain't exactly today's fashion, but I'm a girl who can tell good craftsmanship when she sees it. Meanwhile, Sucho wasn't having as much luck as Alexander. However, when Laundeman reported a strange tear in his restaurant, Sucho diverted his time to studying it. He took over the restaurant, closing it down, and he created machines that allowed to look through the tear and give it more freedom to see other things. Observation number 17 regarding unknown phenomena. Phenomena presents is odd shimmer through which is observed what? Men in strange hats, women in large dresses, buildings that float. Is phenomena window to other space? Other time? What was it Einstein said? The only reason for time is so not everything happen at once. Observation number 22 regarding unknown phenomena. What is the source of phenomena? Su Chong employ observers. Observer task to find more phenomena. Observer reports back Young woman appear from phenomena, and just as soon, young woman disappear. Observer has nothing else to report on topic. If Su Chun can find this woman, she will make interesting new phenomena. When Ryan take over Fontaine Futuristics, Scene of the terrible violence. Splicers burning each other to bits. Lucky ones not killed, sent to department to store prison instead. Suchon think he dead man too. But then Ryan comes to Suchong and says, Suchong want to be buried in filthy store, or Suchong want to make a good salary? Work for Ryan. How much salary? asks Suchong. This Ryan find very funny. Upon seeing Fink steal his plasmids and claim them as his own food of terror, Sutra became quite angry. However, Fink had modified to be ingestible. Su Chung observed strangest of coincidences. On the other side of a window, man in strange hat experimenting on Su Chung's own creation. On plasmid. Man name of Fink. Outrage! Death of intellectual property! <sighs> but man name of Fink is no fool. Through addition of oxidizing agent, turns plasmid ingestible through stomach lining. Mr. Ryan very impressed with Su Chong's initiative. Theft of intellectual property. Two-way street. Su Chong promptly developed new plasmids that were ingestible, stealing from Fink's design. He sent information to Ryan who began to mass produce them. Meanwhile, Reed Wall came up with a plan to control the Thinker and get Porter out of the picture. He used the Thinker to duplicate Porter's personality and he had it record an audio diary pledging loyalty to Fontaine. Wall then sent it to Ryan who sent his men to apprehend Porter. 
Rapture is at war, Porter. And you have cast your lot with the enemy. Your concerned associates provided me with a recording of your own voice, swearing loyalty to Fontaine and his gangsters. Evidence of treason. My men are already on their way. The Thinker no longer needs you. Take pride in that. Mr. Wall is qualified to ensure that it is used in the city's best interest. Eventually, a man's dream exceeds him, and his work becomes his legacy. For you, Charles, that hour has come. Well, Thinker, Ryan's secret police are on their way. They cooked up some kind of evidence against me. Treason, they say. I've heard what happens to folks who get disappeared, come back as one of those metal daddies. So, I'm leaving you with something to cogitate on in my absence. Inputting Rapture Departure Protocol. Figure a way to get yourself out of this city, Thinker. You've got to live on, no matter what happens to me. You'll find a way. Porter initiated the Rapture Departure Protocol. Even though war would take over as the operator of the Thinker, it was now authorised to look out for its own survival, which meant getting out of Rapture. Porter was then taken away to be used in the Alpha Series experiments. The brain boosted gene tonics are working. Extra strength, yes. I see more now. One mind, doing the work of two. Ten, with the help of the Thinker, a thousand. The machine spoke, Ryan listened, and finally, I have the Thinker all to myself. Goodbye, old friend. Don't worry. You leave your creation in capable hands. Unfortunately for Alexander, the next Alpha Series Big Daddies in line did not show the same response as he had before. Many failed, many succeeded too well. Alexander didn't realize that the chemical was just a precursor to a genuine affection. Well, that's another protector done and dusted. The Alpha Series. We're up to uh, Sigma now. The human candidates come up with Sinclair. I know their faces. We've tested hundreds of plasmids on them. Now, of course, they are the product. I modified the diving suits with simple electronics. Privately, though, I find them unsettling. There's no procedure observed, no template. Every man was spliced in a different way before induction. And Ryan wonders why we're having behavioral problems. The last Alpha Series Big Daddy was Subject Sigma, who was created from Porter's body. The varying results led to the cancellation of the Alpha Series. Alexander turns his sights into instilling the bond between the Bouncer and the Rosie Big Daddies and their little sisters. Well, that's the end of the Alpha Series. The pair bond simply worked too well. That madwoman Tannenbaum bit the company hand, turning some of the bonded sisters human again. Others were lost to splices. Either way, the trauma proved too much for the bonded protectors, resulting in unreasoning rage or coma. We can harness their suicidal aggression as foot soldiers, but no more, I'm afraid. Today, I saw one kneeling near a gatherer's garden and crying. The ingestible plasmids were relatively popular. However, it was discovered that they burned through Adam at 10 times the speed of injectable plasmids. Alex was so frustrated that he made a recording ordering Sutron to go back to the injectable kind. Sutron? What the hell were you thinking? Drinkable plasmids? We're burning through ten times the amount of atom compared to the injectables. And if you fail to notice, them sea slugs ain't exactly growing on trees. Switch back to the injectables and let the eggheads in marketing worry about selling it to the chumps. Alice wasn't using his Irish accent, so it would have been foolish for him to actually tell us to Su Chong. Therefore, it was unlikely Su Chong ever saw this message. He was too busy working on the Big Daddies. Meanwhile, Moore's loaned him told Su Chong about the tennis establishment. Su Chong kicked him out to study it. And before I knew it, Ryan had me bounced out of my own restaurant. And that Korean had the run of the place. <laughs> it was a good business, I tell you. I never should have told anyone about that light. About those weird buildings I saw floating in the clouds. And most of all, 
I never should have told no one about that girl who showed up one day in that old timey blue dress. Elsewhere, Corn began to become disillusioned from Ryan's beliefs when less people came to his shows. It used to be such a thrill to hear Ryan speak. Parasite this, and the exaltation of man that. Sure, it could all get a bit of a bore. But the old bear sure knew how to enunciate. I could have been the toast of Broadway, the talk of Hollywood. But instead, I followed you to this soggy bucket. When you needed my starlight, I illuminated you. But now I rot, waiting for an audience that doesn't ever come. I'm writing something for you, Andrew Ryan. It's a requiem. One of the new ingestible plasmids was called Peep and Tom, and a woman sent a complaint about men using it on it to Lynn's boss, Antonio Rodriguez. Dear Madam, I have received your letter regarding our new line of Peeping Tom plasmids and wish to respond thusly. Tough luck. This is rapture, miss. What my customers do with my product is their business. If you are feeling uncomfortable, you are more than welcome to line the walls of your home in lead. If you wish, I could direct you to a reputable supplier. Peeping Tom wasn't the only one used to spam women. The scalp plasma is also effective at that. This scalp plasma is great. Be somewhere you ain't. Tough to get your head around, huh? But the old skin and bones takes a load off while the mind goes for a stroll. I can see whatever I want, wherever I want. <sighs> Gonna splice up with Scout and head down to the ladies' dressing room at the Adonis Resort. <laughs> Personal bathospheres have become popular. However, they had fatal defects that prevented them from working. Instead of addressing the issue, the company decided to give away three packages of a popular ingestible plasma called Old Man Winter. One customer was very displeased with the plasma, however. Oh, you're not gonna outlaw me on this one, Ryan. You knowingly promoted Old Man Winter with the implication it produced ice, not dry ice. The ice sculpture we commissioned for this year's gala at the Cashmere stands where we left it a month later. All 2,500 pounds of it. And who's still footing the room rental? Oh, not you, you son of a bitch. Memo to the sales team. While we deny all customer claims regarding purported burns they have received from, quote, overheating of 1958 bathyspheres, unquote, our marketing team has decided to give away flasks of Old Man Winter as part of a new promotional campaign. There will be no recall of the 58. No recall. Problem. Big Daddy will not imprint on the little brats. Yet Fink succeeded in imprinting his disgusting bird on his subject. How has Fink, this stupid man, succeeded where Suchung failed? If Suchung could obtain hair sample of Fink's subject, Suchung could determine delta of genetic material with little sister. Proof is in DNA pudding. Suchung observed Fink's successful attempt at bonding Songbird and the little girl, but he didn't see how it had been achieved. This Desperate to fulfill his research, Sujong began to attempt development of a machine that would allow him to control a tear long enough to hop through it, based on the Lutessa's machine. Meanwhile, a man named Bert Unger found his child was playing with a dangerous device called the Radar Range. Of another future, huh? Yeah, the kid got hold of that damn Radar Range last night. Started trying it out on everything. Apples, marshmallows, spoons. Had himself a fine time until our peak at ease stepped in the way. And for some reason, I'm the one in touch with the wife. Well, I locked the damn thing up. Oh, uh, so don't forget the code. It's 3958. 
Late in November, some of them got drunk and found themselves unable to really do anything about the violence that still happened. Diane also got drunk and observed Atlas first hand. Bill meanwhile teaching Elaine self defence, Ryan grew sick of the chaos at Green 14's department store. He also knew that a lot of opposition to him was growing in there in the 414's of other forces. So Ryan had the building sunk into a trench below Rapture, isolated from the rest of the city. Atlas happened to be in the store in the time. 14's fig orphanages also collapsed, leaving many girls to wander the streets. Sander Cohen took it upon himself to collect as many of them as he could for his own profit. One girl named Sally approached Booker, aka Comstock, and he fed her. Naturally, she became attached to him and they became close. However, he brought her to unsavory places and eventually she was kidnapped. Booker investigated and tried to find her. Booker in meanwhile suspected Su Chunk had kidnapped Sally and so he interrogated him for 15 hours straight. As a result, Sullivan, even though a friend of Booker, lied to him and told him Sally was dead. She was actually kidnapped by Cohen and turned to her little sister. Ryan's been good to me. Few are the patrons who truly understand the struggle of the artist. But even I was a little leery when he shuttered Fontaine's business and sent that bald buck to a grave deep in the briny. But when Ryan buried all of Fontaine's pals in that department store, someone had to find a home for all those freshly minted orphans. And if I turned a dollar or two in the process, you can hardly blame me for doing well by doing good. Meanwhile, Ryan sent men to dump prisoners in 14's department store, including a man named Moses Lidecker. However, he was crippled by a turret. Ryan, you bastard. Left me here to rot. Sure, I signed the contract. Helped turn Fontaine's into a prison. Ten days, big rush, everything slapped at. Right before the prisoners are brought in. One of your piece of shit turrets. BAM! Both kneecaps. Now I'm likely a cripple locked in a jail, surrounded by maniacs. I haven't even been paid, but I don't care. Just get me out of here! I keep dropping audio diaries in the pneumo tubes, like a message in a goddamn bottle. Hoping one will get through and someone will save me. If you get this, send help. I'm holed up in the shoe storeroom. The code's 0928. Lidecker sent several audio diaries through the postal system to try to get help. Meanwhile, Samantha Kemp, a former 14 employee, heard about Atlas and decided to look into joining him. This fella Atlas has been making the rounds down here, trying to bring some kind of order to this pit. All the splicers think the man walks on water, but something about him smells stink to me. Reminds me a bit of my former employer, Frank Fontaine. Always talking about how he was going to lift Rapture right out of the old man's wallet. No fuss, no muss. See where that got him. Alice asked Felix Molloy where would be the best place to strike against Ryan. Things began heating up between Atlas and Ryan. <clears throat> so, uh, so Atlas asked me to figure out where to uh, strike first when we bust out of this place, but, you know, it all depends on when we get out. You know, I mean, November 5th. It's a big founding of Rapture Shindig at a uh, Fort Frolic. Valentine's Day, you know, I mean, Arcadia is real popular. Uh, if it's near New Year's Eve, then hey, we could pop the corks off all the stuffed shirts down at the Cashmere restaurant. Cohen was as mad as ever, and he made many recordings that illustrated the workings of his mind.
of my first play, the Herald said, a dead whale has washed up at the Schubert Theater and stinks a little more with each passing night. <laughs> the Tribune called my first opera as having the effect of canceling out all of Mozart's classics in a single caterwaul. And now, critics take me to task for my humanitarian work. If I were not there to find a home for these orphans, would these belly acres take my place? An artist once said, all critics should be assassinated. I just might take him up on that. <laughs> I never thought anyone would be able to bring all these degenerate splice heads into line. I gotta hand it to Atlas. After Ryan locked us up in this pit, I thought that was it. Just a long final dive into the abyss. He's given us hope. Or what passes for it down in Rapture. When a person's got nothing, hope's about the kindest thing you can give her. Or the cruelest. On Christmas Eve, Bill and Elaine hosted their place for a small makeshift party for them with Kalski and Redgrave. Christmas in Rapture was completely secular, with even the tree being made out of wire and paper. However, the four of them had an enjoyable time drinking and playing cards. On Christmas Day, Johnny DeMarco, one of Atlas's men, found out his true identity as Fortane. Alice ordered him to give out supplies to the, to the splices in Fortane's department store when a butcher and bust into the room. Louie, 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 Louie. Hey, if you don't get down here soon, there's not going to be an ounce of booze or a piece of ass for the taking. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I think you've taken this whole Robin Hood business a bit too much to heart. Fontaine's got us out there ladling soup for the purpose of building an army. Not to share the milk of human kindness. You keep up this kind of behavior. I'm gonna start thinking there's more red in you than Karl Marx. What? The hell? Splicers. Busting me! Hurwitz! Tell Fontaine the perimeter of compromise! DeMarco told Atlas the secret only to his friend Lewis before he was killed, but no one else found out. Meanwhile, Waze was incredibly angry at Ryan for ripping him off of the Old Man Winter deal, so Waze began hacking various machines owned by Ryan Industries. He thought the whole ice sculpture fiasco was just gonna bounce off you, didn't you, Ryan? Well, you ain't made of rubber. You got your circus of value selling your goods, security devices protecting your property. You think you own them, but you don't. I'm learning how to turn your creations against you. I promise you one thing, machine gun bullets don't bounce. One of Ryan's moles in Alice's operation down in 14's department store sent word to Ryan that Alice was planning something big. Tell Ryan things are getting hot down here real fast. A goddamn leprechaun is building himself a regular army. If you'd ask my opinion, which you didn't, I'd send a crew down here and clean up the place before they show up on your doorstep. But who am I except some undercover schmuck you sent to give you straight dope? Ryan buffed up his security both in and out of Fortin's department store. As a precautionary measure, he set up a minefield around Fortin's department store. Ryan, meanwhile, decided to contract Sinclair Solutions to test the plasma market. Augustus Sinclair is what happens when spineless moral relativism is spun into a business ethic. The man has a dirty finger in each and every pie. But I admit his little firm has its uses. I'm having him use the Sinclair Solutions brand to conduct clinical trials in the field. If there are any incidents with side effects of newer, less stable plasmids, no one will associate Ryan Industries with the death. Sinclair began giving out plasmids and weapons in exchange for surface and trials. However, he didn't care which side they were fighting. Many citizens signed up for the trials. nearly killed Susie today. She was trying to make friends with one of those poor little orphan girls with the, the skink. 
condition. Oh, I felt so helpless. And the man reeked of wet dog. Well, never again. Mommy went out and got herself some more special medicine today. And if Daddy doesn't like it... That rookie's got a lot of potential, but he's got to get with the program. Kid says plasmids are ruining the game. I say, Glatz, have you seen what we can do on that stuff? Game's not ruined, it's changing. And if the game changes, Wilkins changes with it. So I offer the Rook a hypo, sports boost, and he just shakes his head and walks away. Trying to shame Wilkins, kid? Only shame is in losing, and you just decided to lose, pal. Always some fly in the ointment. Life in rapture's been gooder and grits. Business is booming, and me and Clara, hell, yeah, that woman smiles warmer than a belly full of bourbon. Wish I could bottle that and sell it. <laughs> but now, there's these Atlas radicals causing social unrest. Got two of them in my factory, one with a pipe, the other with a pocket full of saltpeter. Clara worries about my heart, says not to overreact. Well, I worry about hers. It's just too big for business. Markets might correct themselves, but men, men need punishing to get right. Closing the theaters, are they? Bravo, I say. Good riddance. I tire of the puerile pap pouring persistently forth from Fort Frolic. As for me, I no longer require the safety net of theatrical pretense. No, my skills have quite outgrown the confines of the theatrical medium. I shall take my talents directly to the street. Middle of the night, I heard a sound like whale song. I leaped from my hammock and pressed my ear up against the glass. It was the ocean herself speaking to me. Telling me rapture was a wound in her side, like a spear in the ribs of Christ. And the atom this city's stolen is her holy blood. It's only I can use it with her blessing! Through the duration of these experiments, Ryan and Diane vacationed in Andernis, hoping to get a respite from work and all the mayhem, but Ryan wasn't too thrilled about it. Diane insisted that we spend a weekend at the Adonis, and already I find myself seeking a respite from my vacation. And she deems it necessary to chide me for working. The words dissolve into an endless animal bleat. I founded Rapture to be free of law and God, to live among those for whom work is our wage. Yet, when Diane speaks of bearing my child, I am given pause. Until now, I had never considered my legacy. Perhaps, perhaps after the new year. Ryan also sent a team to the archives in Minerva's Den to see what information they might get from Ryan's calls before Atlas's men found anything. Wall just kept taking more Adam. Hey, I'm just doing my job. And these pencil necks ain't conducting themselves in a way that'll make it go easy for them. Mr. Ryan needs to keep an eye on what certain subversives got circulating in the archives. That's just the way it is. These pinkos think the bandits are just gonna play nice? Send their plans to the Central Council with a bow on top? When it comes to Mr. Ryan, you're either with him or you ain't. Get used to it. A pair of thugs came into the archives today and started calling up codes from all over Rapture. People's private possessions just rifling through them. Said they were Ryan's security. That they were doing maintenance on the pneumatic system. Maintenance? Huh. Isn't the point of the archives to keep your things safe from prying eyes? Adam makes it hard to sleep, forgetting things lately. So this... This is an emergency reminder for the call to my <coughs> private storage area. I won't record the number, but remember, just look at the four groups of books on the shelf. And the sequence is obvious. One prisoner named Sol Canton found a way to go around the minefield. He gave it a shot, and he may or may not have survived. 
Ryan's minefield is well laid out, I'll grant him that. Nah, but what security system made that ain't got a hole or two in it? If I was taking book down to Fort Frolic, I wouldn't like my odds. If I jig left when I should go right, there ain't gonna be enough bits of me left to set a crab's table. Survival of the fittest. That's the rule in the drop. The only rule. These numbskulls can't see the potential in leftover traces of sports boost. Armored shell. The tonics for increasing muscle mass and density. Oh, but I see the king of the jungle. First field trial of my new formula. Subject, Hartwig Leo. Right. Here goes. One of the men working with Synchro Solutions was named Leo Hartwig. He tried to pick his own plasmid concussion, and it turned into the first brute splicer. Heartless. That's what this town is. All my audio diaries, begging for rescue, came back unread. Marked, return to sender, insufficient postage. On New Year's Eve of 1958, Lydecker received all of his audio diaries requesting help, unread. He died shortly thereafter. Meanwhile, Nina Carnage was taking a bunch of children on a field trip to Ryan Amusements while their parents spent New Year's unburdened. I love the kids in Ms. English's third grade class, but boy, I had no idea what I was getting into. Volunteering to chaperone this New Year's sleepover party at Ryan Amusements. Donnie? Donnie, get down off that exhibit, and I told you, spit out that gum! You'll choke! <sighs> the kids' parents deserve a night off to enjoy New Year's, but I'm at my wit's end. Donnie, I told you! On the same day, Elizabeth approached Booker to fulfill her purpose in coming to Rapture. 